Hey everyone, I wanted to go over something pretty interesting here in the TPI 3D Bay, and that's the mechanism of injury in the lower back. A lot of golfers out there get injured in their lower back, and there's lots of reasons why they get injured, but I want to show you some insight into how one of today's best players in the world, Patrick Cantley, actually injured his lower back. Many of you might not know this, but Patrick was literally out for almost three years with a fracture in his lower back. He actually created a fracture by the way he was swinging, and I want to show you how that can happen. So I've got Patrick's 3D over here on the left side over here in his 2D video over here. And Patrick does something really interesting. He has one of the most flexible cores that I've ever seen in golf. And what do I mean by flexible core? If you look at the disassociation between your upper body and your lower body, that's a very important skill in golf to be able to create power. You want your lower body to be able to start the downswing without your upper body coming with it. And it creates this little stretch between the upper body and the lower body. Normally, we'll see an increase in the stretch from the top of the backswing to the downswing. We'll see an increase of about five degrees. So in other words, if you turn your shoulders 45 degrees more than your hips on the backswing, you've separated 45 degrees. Most players on the downswing start their hips first and they increase that stretch to about 50 degrees. So think of it like a slingshot. I've got a rubber band. I'm going to pull the rubber band back. The best players in the world, what they do is on the backswing, they pull the rubber band back and then they actually increase the stretch by starting the lower body first and then they fire. So there's this little increase in stretch. Now that increase in stretch is normally five degrees. Let me show you what Patrick Cantley was doing. So this graph right here is a graph of the separation. We call it spine rotation. It's the separation between the upper body and the lower body. And I'm looking at a graph that we took back in December of 2015. Patrick's coach, Jamie Mulligan, and Patrick came down here to TPI. They knew they had a fracture in the lower back. They were trying to figure out, hey, now that he's injured and we have some time off, we want to make sure that the swing isn't part of the problem. We think it is. We did the 3D and we took a look at this and I want to show you something. So if I were to take a look at this graph, you'll see this graph measures the separation between the upper body and the lower body. If I take Patrick to the top of the backswing, you can see the video here as well, right here, he's got a separation of about 36 degrees. So it's 36.4 degrees to be exact. That means his shoulders have turned 36.4 degrees more than his hips. Now that's at the top of the backswing. You can really see it here in his swing where he's at. Now as he starts the downswing, and I'll go this frame by frame, as he starts the downswing, that stretch goes from 36.4 degrees to a whopping 55 degrees. I'm going to back that up here. Literally 54, I'll be exact. 54 and a half degrees. So he goes from, let's say, 36 degrees to 54 degrees. That's 18 degrees of an increase in stretch. I told you the average tour player does five degrees. So here's what Patrick does. He gets this stretch. He doesn't take back a lot. Most players separate around 45 degrees. He only did 36 degrees. And then he increased by almost 20 degrees. Now, the overall amount of stretch, 54 degrees, is, that's not crazy. But the fact that he does 20 degrees of that during the transition puts an incredible amount of torque on the lower back. So he starts the downswing with his lower body coming out first, and the speed at which he does this, because it's on the downswing, is much faster than if he does it on the backswing. That increase in torque, the speed at which he does that torque, is also a great source of power. So this is one of those things where we know this is a power source for Patrick, but we also know that it's putting an incredible amount of torque on his lower back. Now, the cool thing about Patrick is he's very talented and can uh, change his swing very easy. And him and Jamie were working on this, and what they did during his injury and his downtime is they built a swing that put less stress on the lower back. And I want to show you that. If I actually go to his spine separation now, and this was literally uh, February of here, 2018, um, if I take a look at his x-factor or his spine separation stretch now and if I take him to the top of his backswing what you're going to notice right away is he's got 49 degrees of separation he's actually got 50 degrees now do you remember from the first graph back in 2015 he only had 36 degrees so before he only pulled it back 36 degrees and then he increased 20 degrees now instead of going 36 degrees he's actually created a bigger stretch on the backswing but if I look at the downswing where that extra speed and torque is happening. He goes from 49, 50 degrees to about 53 degrees. The increase is only three degrees. So what they've done is they've taken his amount of stretch. They've kind of maintained that, but where they did the stretch is in a different place. 
instead of doing it at maximum velocity during transition and downswing, they created a little more separation in the backswing, minimized the amount of torque during the downswing, and believe it or not, it maintains its power, if not even increases its power, and it decreases the stress on the lower back, which is kind of interesting. And if you really look, for you guys that are really into 3D and kinematics, if you look at his kinematic sequence, you'll see the kinematic sequence, this was back in 2015, here's 2018 now, the sequence is even better, and his ultimate club head rotational velocity, or the shaft velocity, went from 2300 degrees per second to 2445, so he's actually increased his velocity and decreased the torque on his lower back. That's some insight onto what some of the best players in the world are doing to try and reduce their injury and stay in this game a little bit longer, hopefully that can help you.